Hello, everybody, and welcome to week nine of the 10 Yard Fight League. We're going to start off here with the Jackson Drive dropping in 20 to 17 against the New York Jets, which is kind of impressive because the Jets are not that good of a team. No matter who you uh, who you tell them and uh, who you get out there for, the Atlanta my Atlanta Falcons losing real handily to Gump 28 to seven against the Desert Swarm. Looks like the Falcons took a trip to New Orleans and they ended up going back home with the tail between their legs. Where Mardi Gras was a little bit too much for them to handle. The Denver Broncos losing to the Dallas Cowboys out there. Uh, taking a look here at New England, Carolina. Not much going on there. Purple on purple violence here. It looks like the Minnesota Vikings uh, decided to hand the Kraft Mac and Sheets a 32-17 loss. The Cleveland Browns handling the Cincinnati Bagels, which is pretty good. The uh, Brady Gaga coming back and saying what up with a 45-35 to victory over the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, you know, yeah, you hate to see it here, folks. The Sons of Saban dropping their first loss to the Houston Texans, 28 to 21. Week nine, losing out. Sons of Saban finally defeated. All right, let's continue to move on here with that after that sad little nugget of uh, information. Looks in like, um, uh, Oh, look at that. The short shots saying what up to Kansas City in a repeat of Super Bowl one. Uh, the saying howdy duty with a 28 to 21 victory as well as Spud Nadal dropping the f hammer again on your mark. Telling the fighting penguins where they can go shove it, what they can do and how to do it with the Tennessee Titans and the Rams with a pretty handy victory. And the Danger Chickens telling the Chicago Bears that uh, -uh you ain't getting past the steel curtain. And with that, folks, it is uh, letting me know that my danger chickens are very, very dangerous here. 42 to 10 victory, which means that they are still undefeated moving forward. The danger chickens are one hell of a dangerous team here. Can they continue to keep it up? I don't know. Let's go ahead and take a look at how Spud Nato decided to hand the Fighting Penguins a massive loss. Uh, seven. Okay. Nobody scored in the third quarter, but that's all right. The total offensive yards gained, uh, 384 against 215. They got nothing going on the ground game, 177 to 49. Penguins struggling on land there. The offensive passing yards was 207 to 166, so not bad. Almost double the first downs. Uh, taking a look at the offensive yards gained, not not too much different, just a little uh, 111, if I'm reading that correctly. Yeah, 111. Uh, two turnovers for the Fighting Penguins, as well as nine third down conversions. So I guess the Fighting Penguins just could not stall out that third that uh, third down of these Spud Nados with that tornado and them French fries. Looking here, nobody had any fourth down. Nobody had any um, two point conversions. Looked like the only touchdowns that the Fighting Penguins scored were when they were outside of the red zone, whereas Spud Nado was seventy five percent with three of them out there. And uh, penalty flags twenty five to fifty, not too bad. But again, almost a total domination in the amount of time that was spent out there. Let's go ahead and hit up uh, the Spud Nados. Josh Allen, 119.9 passer rating, 207, four touchdowns, no interceptions, uh, pretty 69 yards. Nice. With uh, one sack out there, 15 completions of 27 for only 55 with a 7.7 yards per attempt. Derrick Henry, again, doing quite a bit of work at 22 for 95 with a touchdown out there. And then Aaron Jones coming in for 10 for 59. Uh, Chris Godwin and Leonard Fournette looking like they were doing something out there. Josh Allen with a scramble. And Kyle Juszczyk coming in probably for one of those third down conversions to get a nice good uh, chunky yards out there. Aaron Jones was our top receiver at four for 96 with a touchdown out there. Uh, Dallas Goddard, the tight end, looking like they were thrown to the backs as well as the tight end, doing one of those quick little slant routes or something like that. Uh, Chris Godwin with a catch, Robbie Anderson with four of them. Antonio Brown, two for 24. He hasn't stormed off the field yet, so that's pretty impressive. Although I did tell the computer that nobody can change, nobody can do anything. <laughs> so let's go ahead and look here at Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray. 38.6. 38.6. I have to remind myself. Hey, Editor Jared, why don't you go ahead and throw up a graphic 
uh, where if I remember correctly, there was a stat out there that basically said if somebody had thrown the ball into the ground, they would have had a better passer rating than a 38.6. 166 yards, zero touchdowns, two interceptions, 29 for the long, four sacks, 14 out of 28 for 50% completion at 5.9 yards out there. Uh, James Conner, 8 for 30. Kyler Murray having to do a couple of scrambles there with Chase Edmonds going two attempts for one yard each. Uh, George Kittle, 6 for 65. DeAndre Hopkins, 4 for 53. Tyreek Hill, 2 for 22. As well as Michael Thomas, 216 with James Conner and Chase Edmonds with a touch out there. Uh, yeah, uh, Mark, I wonder how the f*** you lost that one, but you totes my goats did. Make sure you edit that, future editor Jared. So, yeah, going into the uh, Week 10 here, Week 10 matchup. Oh, would you look at that? Just kind of uh, messing around here. It looks like the Mac and Cheats are going to take on the Sons of Saban. So can the Sons of Saban re-energize, refit, refuel, and get back out there and go ahead and tell them a who's a what's and what's for and, and reclaim a, a victory here? Uh, taking a look at some of the future games. Uh, I'm pretty uh, – well, no, I don't want to jinx it. I do not want to jinx it. But can the Danger Chickens continue to be undefeated against the Detroit Lions? We'll find out. Oh, look at that. My boom Mayfield, who's now in the Panthers, uh, uh, taking on Mark's fighting penguins out there. And then the short shots going against the hated Seattle Seahawks. And then the Rams are taking on the San Francisco 49ers, a.k.a. Spud Nato out there. Uh, looks like the Desert Swarm is also going to be throwing some hatred towards the Tennessee Titans. And uh, Buccaneers versus the football team. Brady Gaga versus the Jets. It's not not too much going on. Uh, I, we just got the one game to look forward to. So uh, why don't we go ahead and check the actual standings for the, uh, the the league out here. All right, and welcome to the league standings, where in the Listener's League, the Shore Shots improved to 6-3. and three. The Sons of Saban dropped to 8-1. and one. Brady Gaga is 50 or 500, I should say, at 4 and 4. Your 10 Wolverines had the week off with a nice bye to stay at 5 and 3. And Spudnado was 6 and 2. Come on over to the podcast or the podcasters or your co hosts. The Danger Chickens stayed at perfect, going 8 and 0. The Kraft Mac and Sheets were 6 and 2. Jackson Drive were 6 and 3. And your Desert Swarm was 5 and 3. The Fighting Penguins did fall to 6 and 3. But a fun, interesting fact here, if you've been paying attention, that uh, looking back here at week five, the Fighting Penguins and Spudnado faced off for a game where the Fighting Penguins just decided to dominate 24-9. to But this week, as we saw, the Fighting Penguins just got annihilated 7-35. to I see a beautiful rivalry starting here. I'm looking forward to the future when the Spud Natos and your Fighting Penguins face off again to see if it's another big blowout like it has been. Uh, so a little bit of a uh, little bit of red on red violence there. I'm excited to see what we got going forward. Can the Danger Chickens stay at nine to zero? You know, are the Sons of Saban gonna just eke out a victory over the Kraft and Mac and Cheats? Uh, let's go ahead and see what happens coming up next week in Week Ten. <laughs> 